Hey there, everybody. Uh, all you dorks out there, my name's Tetsu. And I'm Champ. And today we're kind of doing a podcast kind of thing. You know, you've really undersold the opening of there. It's, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever edition of the Dose Dorkes podcast. Gamers and grappling. Well, we're gonna take, we're gonna talk about the latest Pokemon Presents that came out today with information on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Pokemon Legends Arceus. And then Champ's gonna be talking about Summer Slam, as well as NXT Takeover, giving my preview of the pay per view and my thoughts as well. Tetsu does not watch wrestling whatsoever. Not. He, <laughs> he only really knows about WWE from what I tell him about WWE, so... You're, you're generally going to hear him talking at the end of this. <laughs> Except me giving my peanut gallery commentary. So, in addition, I'm going to announce that... Because this is the first episode of... of what are we calling this again? Gaming and Grappling? Or Games and Grapple. Game, gaming and Grappling. The Dose Dorkes Podcast. That the winner of the SummerSlam predictions will win the first ever Dose Dorkes Championship. It's going to be a cu- red solo cup, isn't it? No, it's going to be the belt that's in the closet. Oh, fair enough. And we'll hold it until the next wrestling pay-per-view. Which I believe will be... We're going to do predictions for All Out. In, on September 5th. Might as well. So, yeah. Uh, a lot of interesting Pokemon news dropping today. Oh, yeah. Uh, granted, not all of it that's in this we're going to be watching simply because it doesn't all interest us. Uh, Pokemon Unite, which we just saw, that's more my thing. I've played MOBAs over the years. Uh, favorite uh, guilty pleasure is League of Legends playing Yumi, the flying cat on a book. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, uh, Tetsu said, uh, Pokemon Unite is more his thing than mine. I have not played Pokemon Unite. I don't think I will play Pokemon Unite. I just don't like that style of game. Which is fair. In my opinion. Uh, I've never liked games like that. It kind of reminds me of like Command and Conquer from the PS1 days and stuff. Kind of? Kind of a little bit, but with Pokemon, and I just... Mm-hmm. But then again, like, I never played Mystery Dungeon either for... Wait, you've never played Mystery Dungeon? I've never played Mystery Dungeon. Okay, that's not... We've got to do eventually. <laughs> I mean, it's a fun game. I played Pokemon Ranger. Okay, I did too, yeah. I mean, I thought Pokemon Ranger was fun. I mean, I, I mean look, if people like Pokemon Unite, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I just... It's just not for me. But, uh, we're getting a bit off track here. Let's actually get a little bit into the discussion. Uh... Okay, starting off, one of the patches that they actually didn't talk about here, uh, but has re- is about recent to come out, is going to be Blastoise and Blissey. They're being added to the game. Uh, I actually haven't looked too much into that, but I'm actually really excited to use Blissey, because Blissey's one of my favorite Pokemon, and it. I'm assuming she's a support. Uh, I could be wrong on that. However, in the trailer here, uh, you saw Mamoswine and Sylveon are, in the future, going to be added to the game, which is pretty exciting, I think. Well, yeah, and not only that, you did get the official, which people have been wondering now for a while since Pokemon Unite was announced, that you did get the official announcement of when the mobile version of Pokemon Unite was coming out. This is true. Also, you get Japanese Pikachu with a little rope. Well, you get Japanese Pikachu if 5 million people sign up for the mobile version of Pokemon Unite. Uh, yeah, I suppose that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Do you think 5 million people will download Pokemon Unite just for a Pikachu? I mean, considering what other what people will do for any other type of franchise? That's just, yeah, you know, it's true, it's true. I, I just don't... If I recall correctly, wasn't there, like, a, a giveaway for a silver, like, a silver button at a Pokemon contest once? <laughs> and, like, so many people showed up. Just get that dang button. <laughs> Look, you're talking to a guy that has a, you know, wall in our living room that is full of nothing but nerd stuff. Yes. Including a wearable green Mighty Morphin Power Ranger helmet. Which okay. is incredibly stuffy to wear. It is. And, and, you know, that always made me wonder during the show, you know, in the scenes that they had to wear it in the American-made footage, uh-huh. how that happened. How you would wear that, because I can't stand wearing that thing longer than two, three minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's claustrophobic. 
it, it's also very uncomfortable. <laughs> very. Anyway, um, anything else you want to add on Pokemon Unite before we get on deeper into this? Not particularly. Like I said, uh, I haven't really done a deep dive into the game yet. I just started. Uh, I'm playing support mainly because I've kind of always done that for MOBAs. I just love healing, I love giving buffs, and I love generally harassing people incessantly while giggling maniacally. Alright, so uh, next on the list, we had some other updates. Uh, Pokemon Go is getting its fifth year anniversary mm -hmm. with Pokemon from the Galar region. Yeah, I'm excited to see Wooloo and Phalanx entering the roster. Uh, I don't play Pokemon Go much, but I do love those two particular Pokemon. You just love the fact that I bought you a Wooloo plush. That I call sheep. Yeah. And you know, the fact that that was the one Pokemon that Tetsu wanted to use immediately from Sword and Shield. Didn't care about any other Pokemon. He just wanted to, do, to use Wooloo. I did a single Pokemon challenge with it. I, I didn't record it, but I had a lot of fun with it. And the fact that, you know, he also loves Phalanx. Which is an awesome Pokemon. And the concept. And the other one was, uh, who was it? The squirrel. The squirrel. Yeah. Whose name I can't remember. I can't remember the name either. Uh, so yeah, uh, new events coming to Pokemon Go. That's pretty cool. Uh, I I play Pokemon Go when the mood strikes, which is probably once, what every six months or so now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm 31 with kids. I don't have time to play Pokemon Go. Now to be fair, we did get big into it when whenever we were trying the whole breeding thing for Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield. That's true. But I mean, we we kind of evolved from that or evolved me <laughs> however right. you want to put it uh yeah i mean if you enjoy playing pokemon go that's awesome i mean it's it's pretty cool that you can go out and i remember that that was the biggest thing when pokemon go came out mm -hmm. and god would you believe that pokemon go is five years old now yeah i feel old i feel old it feels like pokemon go only came out like a year or two mm -hmm. ago I wouldn't go that far. I mean, just I mean, it just feels like it. It doesn't feel like it's five years old already. That's crazy when you stop and think about it. Yeah. Uh, How many people have gotten run over? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, uh, some other smaller updates before we jump into the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl part. Uh, Pokemon Cafe is getting a remix version with new Pokemon and new updates for new puzzles. Uh, I've never played Pokemon Cafe, so... I haven't either. Well, I played apparently the original version but they're revamping it so they're calling it cafe remix it looks fun i mean i like puzzle games like that you know it just i like puzzles i like stuff like that i'm probably not gonna play it you know yeah and then uh i didn't remember this was still a thing but if you play it it's awesome uh pokemon masters ex is celebrating its second I, anniversary i actually i actually forgot that it was a thing too i think i remember seeing one commercial on youtube <laughs> and then i never <laughs> saw anything about it and there was a certain part of this trailer that we were watching and I looked at Tetsu and I was like is that Silen from Black and White and you come back with no that's N yeah and you said that N has I was like that's not N that can't be N that, that is N he just went from emo to uh, an RPG final boss yeah <laughs> yeah I mean he looks like a, he looks like a villain from like a Japanese RPG now yeah. Which is really weird to say because Pokemon technically is a Japanese RPG. This is true. But he looks like a villain from like the Tales series or Final Fantasy. I, I would agree with the Final Fantasy bit. I mean, you haven't played much of the Tales series. No. All right, let's go ahead now and talk about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Oh, yeah, there is a lot to talk about. Uh, I mean... Keep in mind, these are remakes. This was done before, but, I mean, not just the art style, but they have changed a few things. Uh, Fifteen years have passed since uh, Diamond and Pearl released on the Nintendo DS back in 2006, I believe, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, because we I was a junior in high school. I can't remember. God, that makes back. me feel really old. <laughs> I can remember because I was obsessed with, with Diamond Version. Diamond Version is, is the second... Uh, game that I managed to complete the Pokedex. I was only obsessed with the Underground. That was literally the only thing I did in that game. As soon as I had that unlocked, I spent all my time under there. So, let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the major points that was covered in the trailer. In addition to some other stuff I want to talk about, 
Uh, one of the biggest things when this game was announced a couple months ago was the art style. Yeah. The art style, it, it, it divided the Pokemon community. Now, b- bear in mind, I do have to point this out, Game Freak didn't make these games. Correct. Game Freak, this is being developed by a separate studio other than Game Freak, because Game Freak is working on Pokemon Arceus. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what your feelings are. We really haven't discussed the art style before, so I'll go ahead and just tell you what I think of it, and mm-hmm. then you can go from there. Uh, I like. I love the art style. I love it because it's kind of like the remake of Link's Awakening. Yeah. On the, well, on the Switch. Yeah, I can see that. It, it looks a lot like Link's Awakening, and it feels kind of more closer to a DS remake port than what they did with, like, the Let's Go games. Yeah. The art style. I mean, kind of, it, it feels like a mixture of both, in a way. Look. I get it. It's 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 a decisive point in the Pokemon community. It's different. It's different, and I understand that people wanted a full 3D Sinnoh remake, which honestly doesn't make a lot of sense. Because I mean, just be happy about two a couple of things. Just be happy about this. One, we never thought we would actually get remakes of Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, literally. <laughs> That was the biggest thing because when they when they remade the Hoenn games mm-hmm. and they stopped making them for the 3DS and we're going to Switch, we all thought that's it, we're done with remakes, and I don't want to hear about this whole well the Let's Go games or remakes of the Kanto games. You, you can't even compare the two. You, you can't. <laughs> you cannot compare the two. And while I don't feel like there's as much hype for these games as there was Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. And part of that is because Arceus is coming out two months later. Yeah, a, a lot of people are more excited about that than the remakes, which, that's fair. I mean, it's fair. And we'll get to Arceus. Because like, we have a lot to say about Pokemon Arceus. Yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> um, Hopefully we... But, like, just, like I said, be happy that you're going to actually be able to hold and play these games. Yeah. Well, hold is... Uh, just the fact that she would actually... These games exist. Yeah. Look, you're not going to get a full 3D... And also, this is another thing. Be happy from what I've seen of these trailers. Granted, we've not played the games yet. hmm There doesn't appear to be the lag that was there in the original Diamond and Pearl. Yes. Oh my gosh, the stories I could tell you. Oh, crap. Chancey! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the, the flashbacks change. are beginning. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, okay, well, well, we actually <laughs> want to try to keep this like in a somewhat reasonable time frame. Yeah. So. Um, somewhat. Somewhat, yes. Uh, the next biggest complaint I have with this, and maybe this was only an anime thing, why is Dawn's hair not blue? Uh, probably because it wouldn't look good. But you need to tell me that the Switch that can handle all these colors and bring you such great games as Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild to some people. Uh, and I probably just pissed off a bunch of people with that line, but... Probably. Ah, uh, do you care? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, that, that, to me, is the one thing that is just sticking out to me. <laughs> of all if, the I, if I have to nitpick, oh, Dawn's God. hair is not blue, and I find that very weird. I don't know about weird, but, I mean, it, it's kind of just a, like an artistic choice, I suppose. I mean, I guess when you think about it like that, but... Also, by technicality, this isn't Dawn. This is... The character in the games, was if you did not pick the female protagonist, mm-hmm. the character was named Dawn. Yes, but the Dawn in the game and the Dawn in the anime are completely two I, different I'm aware favorites. of this. I watched the Sinnoh anime. I did too. I still watch the current anime. Occasionally. I'm about to say, I, 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 I... You know, and that is a whole nother podcast discussion. The anime... We might get to it in about two years. You know, that, that... You know, there's a lot to talk about like that. And anyway. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going back to Sinnoh. Yeah. And... There's new stuff. There's new stuff in Sinnoh to talk about. But overall... I think this would be a good time just to sit there and say, you, we've played now Diamond Pearl and Platinum mm-hmm. hundreds of times. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the Sinnoh region, to me, is one of my favorite regions in all of Pokemon. Uh, well, I, I, I love the fact that it was where Pokemon actually became more mo- the more modern Pokemon we know today. Uh, like the physical uh, special split. That, that was huge. That was huge. Yeah, that was huge. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, if we, we talk about going back to Sinnoh, and I can remember playing Diamond for the first time, mm-hmm. and instantly falling in, in love with Turtwig. Yeah, Tur- Turtwig was definitely... It, it, you know, Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup, to me... The three base starters in the Sinnoh games, there's not a bad choice between the three of them. Evolution-wise, there is. Yeah. But, because I love Infernape and I love Torterra, I don't like Empoleon as much. I don't like Grottle. As much as I love the Turtwig line, I I do not like Grottle. <laughs> I mean, it, it follows the trend of really awkward in-between evolution. <laughs> Free... Uh, Primplup. <laughs> Primplup. Yeah. I mean, that's all you have to say. Primplup, you want to talk about awkward middle line evolution. Because if you look at the three of them, Monferno actually looks like the next evolution of what a Chimchar should evolve into. Yeah. But between Torterra and Infernape, mm-hmm. either one of those two is a good... And, and we looked in the trailer during the battle with War with uh, Rorik, they used both Turtwig and Chimchar yeah. in the battle and I noticed they now they didn't show a move set for Chimchar they did show a move set for Turtwig yeah and Turtwig knew Leafage mm-hmm. which obviously didn't exist when Diamond and Pearl yeah I mean because this is a remake move sets have been changed which makes me think but the attack it used it looked like Chimchar was using Mach Punch which he originally did not know. You had to evolve him to Monferno, to and he would learn it upon evolution. Uh, so, actually, it makes me wonder if uh, Pokemon Unite uh, winds up getting more characters if Hitmonchan gets like Mach Punch, if he winds up becoming a character. You're just obsessed with the Punching Fiend, King of the Ring. No, Primeape's the King of the Ring because he won the tournament. That, that, that is true. I still remember that Pokemon anime, and you never brought back Primate. You brought back almost everybody else besides Primate, Pidgeot, and Butterfree. I want the three of those back. Gosh dang it. Primate was an awesome character. I loved his story arc. I love that. Yeah, a story arc that lasted, what, all of four episodes? This is true. But it was actually something compared to, like, a lot of what they've done now. Or, you know... The best part of that whole primate, manky primate art, at least in the United States. In Japan, it made more sense. Yeah. But the jelly-filled donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he catches a jelly-filled donut in a Pokeball. Yes, because that makes sense. Granted, it's the anime. Whether it was Jap- Japanese or in uh, English. Um, anime logic. <laughs> anime, or that was back during the time... And if any of the you know younger kids are listening to this, this is back during the time when people in Japan thought we were really stupid when it comes to video games and anime that we wouldn't understand, you know, certain things that were in Japan that couldn't translate to English very well. I mean, to be fair, that's not really much different from now. I mean, yes, but now it pretty much is that we can we understand. Like, the whole, oh, well, we can't have the true Super Mario Brothers 2 because it's too hard. I mean, have you looked at Twitter? <laughs> I'm not getting into that discussion on Twitter. <laughs> I am not getting into the Twitter-based discussion with people today. Hey, that's fair. Or ever. <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's talk about the biggest part in Tetsu's uh, feelings of the game. Yeah. The Grand Underground. The Grand Underground, and it is certainly grand in this case. Uh, much like in the older games, one of the things you can get are fossils. At that point, you could get the two regional fossils, but you could also get Aerodactyl, Kabuto, and Ammonite. 
and I believe, if I correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. the two regional fossils were, were they version exclusives? I think they were. I, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they were. Which was Craniodos. And the ba- Basildon? Basildon. Yeah. Because the, the six one. gym leader had uh, pretty the evolved. The, the, the evolved. The, yeah, the, 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 se- the second, the skill type gym leader has Bastildon. Byron. Yeah. Byron, yeah. The guy with the shovel. See, I, played, I have not played Diamond and Pearl and Platinum in the uh, better part of a year. I haven't played in a while either. Yeah, and I can still remember stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, the Underground was probably one of the funnest parts ever because you could, there were unlimited fossils you could find. Fossils, jewels, uh, things you could sell. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the biggest things that they've changed about the Underground in Pokemon Hideouts. We're gonna get to that uh, in just a second because it leans into the second part of that discussion. Okay. Uh, the secret bases in the Underground. I honestly found that find that a bit weird because I mean you would have figured secret bases would have been a thing to in the get go because secret bases were in Hoenn. Right. So, why the hell wasn't it in the underground? Because that would have been perfect. That would have been perfect. Were secret bases a thing in Sinnoh before? Because I can't remember if they were or not. Uh, now that you mention it, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, huh. So, anyway, you can create a secret base in the underground and use Pokemon statues, which leads into the next part, but with the types of statues that you have in your secret base lead to what Pokemon you can find in... The Pokemon hideout. Or hideaways. Yeah, that could have been the more dramatic reveal right there. Uh, so it looks like, and we haven't had this confirmed yet, mm-hmm. and I pray to the gods above that this is true. Now keep in mind, uh, if you look in the trailer, the they do show those particular things in the overworld, so... Eh. <sighs> do these Pokemon hideaways take the place of the honey trees? Like I said, you actually... They showed a couple of the locations, and one of the locations has a honey tree next to the little house. Right. Now, whether or not that's just for decorative at this point, I don't know. I hope, in fact, it is, because for anyone who's played the Diamond and Pearl original games, the honey trees were like one of the worst mechanics in the game. In the history of Pokemon. Now, I don't know about that. But pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> okay, okay. W- 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 you want to talk about... You don't think it's one of the worst things in Pokemon history? Mm. Okay. How about in order to find a Munchlax that has a 1% encounter rate, uh-huh. there are only four trees in okay. the entire game of the 36 in the game. And they're completely random. And they're completely random. Depending on your game. Depending on your game. And the most you could use an online guide for to find mm-hmm. were two. Yeah. And you had to wait six Real world hours. Yeah, you, you couldn't you couldn't adjust the clock or anything. In order to get So Um Awkward pause. Yeah, sorry. Uh but this the only reason I say this is in the trailer in the Pokemon hideouts, they show a munch lax. Yes. Which is hilarious because like what, a day before then? Uh, I ended up making a comment like, uh, wait, no, it actually was... It was a couple of days before this. A couple of days. That, when they, when they kind of showed it, uh, they were talking about it, uh, and I was like, well, uh, you <laughs> finding a munchlax in a cave. And then we saw the trailer! It's like, ha! <laughs> I predicted this! Yeah, <laughs> he did. He, we were sitting here the other night just talking about that. Um... So, yeah, I mean, and apparently uh, specific types of Pokemon will change in these Pokemon hideaways based on statues, and only certain types of Pokemon can be found in these Pokemon hideaways in Sinnoh. Which is kind of interesting, because that... uh, mm. Okay, I'm a bit nitpicky about this kind of thing, simply because why are they down there to begin with? You, You know, your guess is as good as mine on that. But then you also have to explain to me why slathering honey on a tree attracts a monkey. I mean, is that really a hard concept to get? No. I get combi. Uh-huh. I get munchlax because it eats anything. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. But why does it show up with an apom? Have you ever seen a monkey eat? No, I've never seen a monkey eat honey. Trust me, you never want to. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anything else you want to add on the Grand Underground? On the Grand Underground, uh, not particularly. I do find it interesting. Uh, now, I could be wrong because I remember this being a, maybe an older trailer, but it didn't seem like you were on the grid system anymore uh, uh, with it. It did show in the trailer that, yeah, you are on the grid system. Um all right, so let's move on and talk about some other changes and stuff added or stuff they've brought back. Uh, the thing that like has been in the last, what, two Pokemon main series games, uh, the outfit changes. Yeah. Uh, you can customize, you can change, you can dress up like a hobo, maybe. <laughs> it looks like there's more options than there were in Sword and Shield. Yeah, that's true. Which... And to be honest with you, it looks like your character does not have that blank expression. Which is nice. Which the characters from Sword and Shield and Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon all had. There were so many memes with that. I mean, it just looked like you just sat there and stared. But it looks like the two uh, characters from this game does not have that look on their face. Yeah, they seem to actually have expressions. Which is another, in my view, opinion of the art style being pretty damn good. Yes, um, attention to detail because heaven knows most games nowadays seem to work one that. of my favorite features coming back f- from Diamond and Pearl capsules yes one of my favorite things because it was so freaking cool you could customize your Pokeball and the little lights mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. capsules are coming back uh, looks like we're going to have some new uh, new stickers, hopefully. Yes. Uh, Confetti. If anybody didn't know what those are, capsule seals, you put them on your Pokeball when you throw your character throws Pokeball out. And they do little effects. They do little effects, like confetti, fireworks, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, super contests, are, which were the bane of the Hoenn and Sinnoh games. Yes. Uh, they look like they have been revamped and actually kind of look fun. Kind of. I mean... We only saw bits and pieces of it. Until we actually get in the game, I, I'm gonna lean. I'm gonna lean a little bit more on the cautious side with that. Well, it's because we've been burned before with Pokemon contests. Very much. And it's nothing like the anime. It's not. And the Pokemon contests, when they brought them back in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, mm-hmm. that was one of the selling points, if you remember, because you got the cosplay Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, contests have never been fun. They've been an experiment in Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, now, the anime took the contest step further and made it kind of like a gym battle and everything. And those were cool in the anime. Yeah. Um, seeing, like, different moves combined together, moves looking like certain things, like... How Swift could be used to make tornadoes and you know, light shows. Combining and like, like Swift that. with like Energy Ball. Wasn't there like Weasel trying to learn Acid Armor or something like that? Like with Aqua Jet? I think so, but then again, you also remember that same Weasel later in the Sinnoh series learned Ice Punch by punching a waterfall. This is also a good point. You know, so there's he, that. He, he went all Wushu. Wah! And at that Sinnoh, uh, that was the only one of Ash's Sinnoh Pokemon not to evolve. Besides Gibble. This is true. But to, would, but technically, would you count Gibble in that because he got Gibble so late into the Sun in, in the uh, Diamond and Pearl series? That was a good point. Because he did have Glass Glider and he evolved into Glass Score. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to say this. I really, and I, you know my feelings on this, I really love Glass Score. I, I will admit, just on the topic of Gliscor, I actually for a while could not figure out its typing because at one point I was pretty sure that when it evolved it went from flying and ground to flying and poison. And then later somebody told me, no, it, it's ground and flying. But it doesn't look like a ground type. Right. Um, also, it's shiny is cool. It's shiny is very cool. Uh... We're going to also talk about now the last last couple of things, and then we'll wrap up the Diamond and Pearl portion of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, The Union Room is coming back. Oh, yeah. Um, 
I mean, it, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the fact of being able to connect with people. However, I will point this out. Uh, my experiences with the union room were not very good because for whatever reason, my, my particular DS or uh, at, at that point, um, it, it the, the connectivity on it was completely finicky. Right. So... And I don't know if this happened to you or not, but I, I used the union room once and ended up battling a Japanese player. Right? I ended up and but the thing is I didn't realize at the time mm-hmm. that they could hear you through the DS. Because the DS had a microphone built in it. And I could literally hear the guy from Japan speaking Japanese at me. I honestly never noticed that. I I, I, I can just remember being in twenty nine palms where I grew up and being Outside because we didn't have high quality internet at the time, so I was pulling off somebody's Wi Fi. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> I was 16. Full, full uh, disclosure here. Yeah, full disclosure here. Don't do that. Uh, pirating is wrong. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, does that count as pirating? Well, no, but it's not. It, it's, it's still not, wrong, though. It's not ethical at all. Uh, and then the last thing that the trailer came out, besides, look, if you've played Diamond and Pearl, you know the story of Diamond and Pearl. Yep. I mean, it's, it, unless... There are two gigantic <laughs> behemoth things that look control, like nothing. They control space and time. There you go. Yes. Um, your Pokemon follow you now. Yeah. Your lead Pokemon follow you, which is always a welcome feature in Pokemon games. It is. Um, they took it away for Sword and Shield, brought it back in the DLC, but you could only be in, what, one the, area? You could only be in the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Which uh, was weird. Look, the best part of this, the whole thing, we, we break down stuff. We, we're going to poke some fun and some stuff for the next couple months. Yes. Uh, we are going to do a playthrough of Brilliant Diamond and or Shining Pearl when they come out. As soon as they come out, I hope we do it on the exact day. We, we are going to do it on the exact day they come out. Uh, but look... We poke fun at this. We have some fun. We talk about it. The fact is that we are getting Diamond and Pearl remakes. Yes. And that, to me, is pretty damn cool. It really is. I, I'm excited. I want us to build the best team possible as Pachi Risu. Um, you, you know, yeah, that's another thing before we go on. Like, where did this whole Pachi Risu thing come from? Because you weren't saying Pachi Risu a couple days ago. Because it's Pachi Risu, and I recently watched that... Uh, VGC. Uh, oh, that's where, <laughs> that's where this comes from. Okay. I was wondering. Uh, no, because, you know, we, we've, we've pretty much narrowed this down that we're going to coin flip this when the game comes out. Because yeah. I think we've pretty much decided that we're not touching Piplup our first playthrough, correct? Yeah. No, no so problem. we're going to coin flip between Chimchar and Turkswig. Now, for those who like Empoleon, don't get me wrong, it's a great Pokemon, and its typing's actually pretty cool. But it, mm. and the first time I ever played Diamond version, Piplup was my starter. I, I didn't touch it. Piplup was my starter the first time I ever played Diamond. I just fell more in love with Turtwig and Chimchar in in um, successful uh, playthroughs. Yeah, of I, that. Turtwig was my first starter, and it's always been my starter. Nothing against Infernape or Empoleon. I just prefer the World Turtle. That's because you're a Grass type lover. That used to be true, but I actually... Nothing against Grookey or anything. You I, prefer Scorbunny. Yeah. I, and I, I prefer Sobble. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is, you know, in case you're wondering, we are brother-in-laws, mm-hmm. and we we disagree on Pokemon typings. Bulbas- Bulbasaur is better. Charmander is a better Pokemon than Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Charizard is better than Venusaur. Venusaur. Charizard. Venusaur. Charizard. Venusaur. We'll agree on one thing. Blastor sucks. Yes. Well, it's good. It's a good it's defense. Good, it's good defensively, but it's, you know. It sucks. Uh, okay, you know what? Before we move on with the rest of this, and we get Narcissus, because, you know, we're going to do this. This is probably going to be like an hour and a half show. Yeah. It's the debut episode. We'll try to keep this to an hour going forward. Try. Uh, jo- favorite Johto starter? Favorite Johto starter? Mm-hmm. Chikorita. And again, we're doing the grass versus fire thing because it's Cinequil. Chikorita. Cinequil. Uh, okay, Hoenn. Hoenn? Yeah. Trico. Trico. Yeah. It's Trico for me, too. Don't get me wrong. I love Blaziken, and Marshtop is 
and Mars Stop is cool. Uh, oh, well, not Mars Stop, but uh, the is what? it Mars Stop? The no, no Mars Stop is the second. Is the yeah. yeah. Who? Which one was the third one again? Because Swampert. 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 My mind yeah. went blank there for a second. Uh, Swampert. I, I was wondering why you kept yeah. looking at me. I, I, I'm I definitely like, not going to remember it. Yeah, Swampert. But Sceptile is one of the most badass Pokemon ever. Uh, mainly from the anime. I mean, the little twig in his mouth. He looked all cool. Plus, he took out a Darkrai. That too. And then Sinnoh. I mean, it's Turtwig for me. Yeah. Uh, you know the. Between Snivy, Ted Pig, and Oshawott. I know which I'd... one your niece would say. <laughs> and she would say Oshawott. Honestly, I'll admit I prefer Ted Pig. The first time I ever played Black Version, it was Snivy because I was just like, oh, giant grass snake. Yeah, right? I'll admit I played Snivy first. Uh, and to me, I don't. I don't like the universe starters as much. I, I I can't really disagree with you on that. They're not as imaginative. No, I mean I would I would sit there and say that I would take Snivy, but Ted Pig is pretty cool. And Oshawott, like I said, my daughter is in love with Oshawott, and that's perfectly okay. Yes. Uh, Kalos. Hmm. That's that's actually a bit difficult. Uh, no, it's not. It's simple. I like the chipmunk. Chespin. Yeah. It, it's simple. Hmm. It's Froki. Because of Greninja. I mean, I don't particularly like the ninja stereotype. So. Greninja is <laughs> awesome. And we all agree that... I Look, Kalos... Remember, we gotta keep this... Try, try to keep right. this under an hour. <laughs> No, I said the second episode to be an hour. <laughs> I'm going to go as long as I want to on this. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Kalos is a fun region. The EXP system in Kalos is broken as hell. Yes. Very, very broken. But what's worse? The EXP system in Unova or the EXP system in Kalos? Unova. I would agree because it takes forever to level up anything in the black and white games. Yes, doing a single Pokemon challenge sucks. And you would know, because you've attempted to do a Ditto challenge in black and white, haven't you? Yes, and I actually beat it. Mm -hmm. That's because you're crazy. Um, How is that crazy to Ditto? Anyway. Ditto is awesome. But, you know, the thing about the fire starter in Fennekin, in, in Kalos, it evolves into a fox fire wizard. Yes. And as cool as that sounds... I don't like it. I mean, I don't disagree with that. It just, it feels wrong. Like, it, it, it's pretty interesting from this aspect. Greninja is a ninja. Yeah. Which, honestly, ninja stereotypes. And Chespin's font, Chestnut literally looks like... <sighs> Do you remember season two of Digimon? Yeah, vaguely. It looks like Armadillomon mixed in with Chespin. I can, I can see that, yeah. Actually. It looks like Armadillo Mon before uh, Digi Armor. Digi, or Digi, Digi Armor, Armor Energize! Yeah, Digi Armor Energize. Let <laughs> me <laughs> just pull out all the stops here. Don't ask me how I remember that. Yeah. I remember that because fucking. I have the fucking Digi Egg of Courage tattooed on my arm. Yeah, but I don't know how I remember it. I tend to forget crap. Because, you know, it's Flame Germon, the Fire of Courage. Actually, it'd been, be a bit more deeper than that. Flangeramon, the fire of courage. Flangeramon, the fire of courage. I mean, hell, you could probably stick it in here. You're editing the fucking video. Hi. Flangeramon, the fire of courage. <laughs> and then, uh, the sword and the, uh, Sun and Moon starters. Uh, that, I mean, it would have to be, it would have to be Rowlet. Yeah, I, I'm saying Rowlet too because. Giant fire wrestling cat. I mean, it's been done. Or sea lion thing in Poplio. Yeah. And while I appreciate the fairy typing it gets, mm -hmm. there's just something about a grass ghost type using a bow and arrow. The grass ghost typing was what drew me to... 
growl it first because I mean it's such a unique type. Of, it, well, unique. It, it was. Now yeah, you've got a yeah. ghost grass anchor. Well, no, because you already had a ghost grass type before that. You did in Trevion. True, but didn't you have to get him through like a trade evolution? Wasn't he a trade evolution? Yeah, you, I think he was a trade evolution. But the the point was that that typing did exist before. True. However, with Rylette being a starter, and it also in the Sun and Moon, or was it Ultra Sun and Moon, that it had its own unique Z move. This is true. So yeah, uh, it is an interesting concept, though. All right, so we're gonna let's wrap this back up on the Diamond and Pearl side. Yeah. Uh, look, final thoughts from me. I'm excited for November 19th. Mm -hmm. Uh, just for the sole fact of Diamond and Pearl, especially Diamond, the amount of time I sunk into Diamond version in my junior year of high school yeah. was insane. And I really, to this day, I mean, I put in hundreds of hours in Black and White and Black and White 2, X and Y, and everything that's come after that. Yep. To me, the Sinnoh region it was the pinnacle of early generation Pokemon games. Especially if you go for competitive. There are plenty of competitive players who will swear up and down that Gen 4 was their favorite. Gen 4, to me, will always be special. Not just for, like you said, the competitive stuff and everything. Yeah. To me, Gen 4 overall was the best generation besides the and look this is coming from somebody that has played the original games to death yeah and spent hours and hours and hours playing red and blue and single pokemon challenges single pokemon challenges and everything onyx versus onyx onyx versus onyx we, we couldn't upload that yeah i mean we still have it i think but i'd have to go looking for <laughs> files um I'm trying. I'm trying. To, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get these feelings out of what I think about Gen Four and these remakes, and it's hard because yeah. I don't know how you describe something that means a lot that they're getting remade. I, I would assume describing it would actually be pretty simple because you're describing it, but you're giving emotion along with it. Well, you know, and it's to me is now keep in mind I'm emotionally stunted, so how I act is a bit <sighs> odd. I'll say this. Diamond version brought me back to Pokemon. Because I was... Yeah, I played Ruby and Sapphire. Mm -hmm. And then I played Emerald. And I was getting to the point of where I was kind of starting to get bored with Pokemon. And then Diamond relit that flame. And so, to me, Diamond version is the reason why I'm still playing Pokemon to this day. Why that there is a Weedle and Caterpie plush sitting here in front of us. Yes. Next to a, you know, Ludicolo, Ludicolo and a Scyther and a Psyduck and Wooloo is somewhere in here. Oh, and man. there's a Mr. Mime over there and a Snubble over there. Not, Not to mention the 50,000 ones that are sitting on the nerd shelf in the living room. Yes. And why that the, the Switch over here has got Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise stickers on it. Look. So what I'm trying to say is it brought the love of Pokemon back. And yeah. to me, this this is the remake I wanted. Hmm. More than the more than the Johto games, more than Hoenn, the Hoenn games. To me, Sinnoh will always hold a special place as a Pokemon fan. And considering what it what it is, what it look how it's looking, I'm really hoping that this will actually bring a new generation of Pokemon fans into the game. Because, here's the thing, the anime is one thing, like, heaven knows there have been so many memes made about Ash's age, uh, the, hey, stop that, sorry, dog, anyway, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, the games are where a lot of people come into the franchise, and it's looking like, at least from my perspective, especially with the Grand Underground, we're going down underground anyway! Uh, it, it, it looks like it's going to be a ton of fun, I hope, and I hope a lot of people enjoy it. And, and you know, we, 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 we talk about, you know, going back to the past. Going down the underground. Going to the underground. Going back to the past to take one step towards the future. Yeah. In a lot of ways, you have to think about, like, 
how many times has Kanto been remade? Right? I've lost count at this point. But the Let's Go games could have picked any region. Mm hmm. And it was basically a remake of Yellow. Yeah. Fire Red and Leaf Green were the first remakes. Mm hmm. Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yeah, the second half was Kanto. Yep. The remake, and I don't like it. I hate the animation. I God, I hate the animation. But what Pokemon movie did they choose to remake? <laughs> Mewtwo Strikes Back. Yes. And I hate the claymation look. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. God, I hate that remake. God, I hate it. And they ruined Mewtwo Strikes Back. But God, but the thing is, they've remade it. Yeah. They wanted to capture the original spirit of Pokemon. Which they failed. Which they failed. Which they tried to do with the black and white anime. And failed horribly. Yes. But, and they tried to do it again in the Alolan anime. And, well, this time I guess you can't really say they failed because Ash actually won something, but. Yeah. Anyway. You want to talk about controversy with art style? Oh my god. Yeah, the art style of the Sun and Moon anime. God. Uh, uh, God, that w- can we just both agree that that was a terrible decision? Uh, okay. I'm not going to say that the art style grew on me because I- I'm, go- I'm going to be honest here. I've actually kind of just swerved away from the anime because I, got- I just kept. I brought up Ash's age earlier with the whole meme thing. It, I really wish that they would just put him to bed at this point because he's been he's been through so freaking much. Here's the thing: <laughs> after twenty closing in twenty five years of the anime, right? In fact, he's still technically fourteen. He's ten. Ten? What? He's ten. I thought they changed his age to fourteen. No, he's still ten. Oh, that was re no. that was re um confirmed in the first episode of the black and white anime. Oh gosh, dang it. Um, even here's the thing. Thought. Here's the thing. The Pokemon anime over the years, whether it been the Mikanto League, the Orange Islands, Johto, Sinnoh, Hoenn. Pokemon Johto. So we agree that basically to us, and the original Pokemon anime ended for us at the end of a Johto saga. Yeah. Now, the Hoenn and Battle Frontier arcs were good. Yeah, they were. And the Sinnoh stuff was good. Towards the end. Yeah. <laughs> Majority. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. I've never understood this. And I've never understood the decision, starting in Hoenn, for him not to use any of his older Pokemon. I get the reasons behind it. I don't. I get... The, I, under, I, get I understand the reasons. However, can we... Ha- can we get to the point where he stops losing to the first gym leader of every region? <laughs> I mean, because I think the only time that has not happened... There's only been two times, I think. The, he didn't lose to Roxanne, mm. and he didn't lose to, to the gym leader trio in Unova. Which I think I probably would have never... but He, he would have never lived it down. Right. Um... But here's the thing is, you know, we, we can talk about anime logic and plot points and, you know, I love Dragon Ball and that's another discussion for another day. Maybe in another video. <laughs> yeah. Um, Continue. But we talk about the anime and we're going to get to Pokemon Arceus. But yeah, we've kind of gone like we've on a big gone on, Yeah, we've gone <laughs> off on a big tangent. My biggest thing, the thing I have the biggest issue with the Pokemon anime is literally at the end of every series, mm-hmm. with, especially my big, the biggest point of contention that you can see this in, is at the end of the Sinnoh series to the beginning of the Black and White series. Yeah. Is why is he so stupid again? That that's kind of, that's kind of the biggest thing. I mean, Ash has been doing this for a long time, and he was actually starting to catch on. Like, hey. If I do this instead of this and actually use strategy, hey, I can actually win. And then they screwed it up. The biggest example you can look at this is is when he fought Tobias, right? Yeah. He took out two Yeah, it took him all six Pokémon. But he was able to take out two. But legendaries. he took out two legendary and he opened the battle using Heracross. Gosh damn it. I mean, to me 
that's a perfect strategy I would use against a Darkrai. Yeah. I would use a Heracross. That's a buck type. Matter of fact, though, I probably would use a Primate with Vital Spirit, but, you know. That's a good point. It's just saying. It but try. but you look at the end of it, he made the top four of the Center League. Yeah. The highest at that point he had ever made. And then you get to Unova. And he's a complete gosh thing. And... It's another se- It's another season where he gets all three starters, mm-hmm. and only one of the three evolve, and it doesn't even evolve all the way. He gets Pig Knight, and now he had some powerhouses on that Unova team. He did. Crocodile. Yeah. Uh, Levani. Mm-hmm. The you know Pikachu is always a freaking powerhouse, which. <sighs> That's a discussion for another time. About Look, bullshit. Pikachu. Well, you, you think it's to this day? You think it's bullshit that Pikachu beat Regice? I don't think it's bullcrap that he beat Regice. It's just the fact that <sighs> Ash's Pikachu. Okay, I, I'm gonna go on a little bit of historical Pokemon Be- knowledge before here. Before you go on that, there's one more point I want to make. Okay. We're talking about bullshit in the Pokemon anime, right? Which there's a lot. Which there's a lot. Do you remember for the longest time since Ash's Charmeleon evolved into Charizard? Mm -hmm. For like, until the, until the end of the second half of the black and white anime, what was its signature move? Seismic Toss. Right. Around the world. (laughs) Right. And how many times did Charizard lose when using Seismic Toss? What? No, he never lost using Seismic Toss. Huh. It, there was one time. Because when he battled Brandon for the third time, at the end of the Battle Frontier arc... Yeah, Charizard came He in. went... He came in, Ash was like, use Seismic Toss on a Dusknor. <laughs> this is true! I forgot about that! Wait, wait, wait. There is precedence. There is precedence for this. In Gen 1, Seismic Toss worked on ghosts. <laughs> but it's not Gen 1. This is true. It, it's not even that. It's the fact that he ordered Charizard to use Seismic Toss. But then again, it was shown at in the Sinnoh, at the Lily of the uh, Valley Tournament. Mm-hmm. Whatever the fuck the Center League was called, I think it was called that. Gibble ate a shadow punch. Like ate a shadow punch. Like opened his mouth <laughs> and ate a shadow punch from a dust nor. I'm actually curious, how would that taste? Maybe tangy? I don't know, but the point of it is, is then he he ate a shadow punch. It's a gibble, it eats everything. I, mean, I, just, I get where you're going. I get where I go. I hope you get where I'm going with this because this makes no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, but that's like literally a drop in the bucket compared to some of the other stuff that has happened at the anime. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't know about you, but we've gone off on this for a while. I mean, I pointed it out twice. Okay? Yeah, Pokemon tangent. <laughs> We're up to 53 minutes recording already. Oh, dear. Uh, we need to go ahead and we need to talk about Arceus. Yes. And we. Alright, uh, Pokemon Arceus. Yeah. There is a lot to talk about with this. Uh, well, I broke, started the breakdown of Nominal Pearl. What are your opening thoughts? My opening thoughts is it, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be straightforward with all of y'all. I nitpick a lot when it comes to animation and that kind of stuff. And it kind of annoys everyone when I do it, but hey. Anyway, uh, The art style's not bad, I'm not gonna lie. And the animations are not terrible. I mean, you you pointed out the... One of the things Champ has pointed out multiple times is the Pokeball that shoots a firework. Uh, Now, for anyone who knows Pokemon... (laughs) uh, Yeah. you'll, You'll know that whenever a Pokemon is caught... The ball will shake, and it'll either make a noise, or like in the anime, it'll make a noise, and the red light that is on the button will flash and then go out. Uh, because of the way the Pokemon, the po- Pokemon, Pokeball looks, if you remember the original trailer, 
Maybe I'll put a picture of it uh, during editing. Um, the Pokeball looks like it's made of wood, and it has a latch on it. Oh, God, that latch. So, Tetsu has pointed out that I, the one thing, the one major thing I take away from this trailer, beside when the biggest nitpick I have is the Pokeball shooting fireworks after capture. That is, to me, stupid. Um, I'm not going to say it's not stupid, but, I mean, it, it, out of everything that's happened in the Pokemon world... But the biggest thing you took away from the first trailer that you have talked about for freaking months mm -hmm. has been that damn latch on that Pokeball. It is awesome. I, 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 love, I love it. I love that Pokeball. So, opening thoughts for me. It feels... Like, Pokemon meets Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I can see that. It feels like that. Now, to me, I didn't... I'm gonna say this, and it's gonna piss people off, but that's fine. I don't give a shit. Neither do I. I did not really care much for Breath of the Wild. I never played it, so I, I couldn't... T I don't have really an opinion, but, I mean... To me, it was not a traditional Zelda game, and I get it. You have to evolve with times and everything. Cool. If you love Breath of the Wild, cool. It looks like Breath of the Wild meets Pokemon to me. I like the idea of being able to use sneaking mechanics and getting close to Pokemon and just being able to observe them. You are a ninja. Anyway. Observe them in like their natural environments and everything. Quote, unquote. Yes, because, you know, in the trailer, there was one particular point in the snowy area, why was a gibble walking around? Did I have cold feet? <laughs> Bad puns aside. Uh... And that this is not... This is technically the Sinnoh region, but it's not called the Sinnoh region. No, it's called the Hisui region, which brings up a lot of implications of, like, time of management. Like, who became in charge that it had to be, it had to be called the Sinnoh region? Which, I have a prediction for that. Sometime at the end of the game, there's probably going to be some guy, like main character that you wind up meeting, says, we shall call this place the Sinnoh region, because that name has meaning somehow. <laughs> That's my prediction. It's probably some, not going to be some right. Some circle of life stuff, right? Yeah. But you made a very interesting point when we were headed home from work today, that... You claimed that else? that was my phone. Um, you claimed that you thought that this was the origin story for Arceus and Garatina. Okay, to to put a little context for that, I, I've been <clears throat> following a lot of the theories people have been putting up for the game. Uh, for what little information we had before, um, there is a theory rolling around because of the mountain, right? That is Mount Coronet. Yeah, which is based off Mount Fuji. Um, Fun fact. Uh, Mount Coronet plays a large part in the Sinnoh games, or at least Platinum. Slido, Slido. That was random. Anyway. Yeah, it was my phone. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and there's actually a picture. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's actually on the official art box. Right. Uh, there, you can see a temple on top of Mount Coronet. And what was in Platinum? A temple on the top of Mount Coronet. Exactly. Broken, and the pillars were bent to heck. Which, I mean... You're talking were... about, you, basically, you're talking about near the sky pillar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, a whole temple instead I mean, of broken. You know, if this game is called Pokemon Legends Arceus. Mm -hmm. So, in the trailer, there were several points during the trailer that Pokemon were struck by, like, lightning... But then they had turned down and had red eyes. And you pointed out to me that that's a sign of Garatina. It, it it kind of gives me an idea that these Pokemon have gone mad. And there's got to be a reason behind it. And then you think the master of the distortion world is behind it. It's either that or Arceus has become a real arse. <laughs> you know, here's the thing I really... That, that's, you know, one thing I didn't bring up during the Diamond and Pearl part of the sh of the show. I hope the distortion world does not play a role in any of these games, cause it was terrible. 
honestly, I didn't mind it. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I really didn't mind it. I like the concept. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh... Gotta be fair, there were some things that just didn't make a whole so, lot of sense. So... The starters. The starters of Rylette, Cintiquil, and Oshawott. Yeah. Uh, you... We had discussed earlier that this played into a theme that you had an idea behind. Okay. Uh, again, a little context here. Uh, a lot of people have tried coming up with reasons why these particular Pokemon were selected. One of the funniest I found, which I get where they were coming from, uh, but it just kind of flat, falls flat on its face. Uh, they were, because of the very Japanese theme of the village and obviously your outfit, and heck, even the leader of the gosh dang it, Galaxy Expedition. <laughs> uh, that's uh, anyway, Galaxy Expedition Force. I'm about to say, if they make a damn pose, I'm gonna. Have a oh come on! No, no, no! It's like, you just gotta think. Can you force pose? <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, the leader of the of the um, Galaxy Expedition Force. He's actually <sighs> wearing tra uh, traditional. I think it's called a Hakana or Akata. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that. You better, you would know more than me. Mm. But uh, it, it's a very traditional samurai dress, or what you would uh, usually see on a uh, samurai. Right. Uh, and ca what you could, I guess, you could call their casual wear when they're not wearing armor. Um, the fact of the matter is, though, he, uh, the very themes of you know are very Japanese, very Japanese tradition, uh, or it, you know. To an extent, I suppose it depends on what area you're going from. Sengoku Jidai, maybe? Anyway. Um, uh, I lost my talking point here. Anyway, the individual who made the, uh, this... You were making a connection between the three starters. Oh, that's true. Um, <laughs> the individual who made uh, this, this little idea had pointed out that you had Samurai, who right. is... A Samurai-type Pokemon. At least by name. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, you also had, uh, which it's funny because his pre evolved form, you know, after Oshawa, mm -hmm. acts more like a quote unquote ninja. Do what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, to be. You know, I, I think, I think the, evo the full evolution is actually the most awkward out of, that t of those two. You know, <laughs> you bring up an interesting point. If this is supposed to be like ninja samurai type stuff, right? Yeah. Why Oshawott? Why not Froakie? Um, probably because uh, Greninja is overused at this point. Well, I mean, yeah, Greninja's in Smash, so... Yeah. Also, Ash Greninja. Which... I mean, I get Rowlet. I mean, it's an archer. It's an archer. Rowlet, to me... And to me, the, the and I and I hate to say this again. The I get Samurai, I get Rowlet, whose final evolution I cannot remember the name of right now. Don't ask me; I have no idea. Cyntaquil to me, and I told you this before, is the one that does not make sense. That, that's where the comparison fell flat because the guy uh, pointed out that. Uh, Rowlet's evolved form is basically an archer, and archery was a big thing back in ancient Japan. Uh, Samurai is quote unquote samurai Pokemon, uh, and Typhlosion's just a freaking badger. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> it's a badger. A badger with fire that comes out of its shoulders. <laughs> right. A badass badger, but still, it's a badger. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and you know the messed up part is I took notes during everything else and I didn't take notes during this uh, <sighs> awkward pause right uh, let's talk about the whole uh, Pokedex thing yes which is I think is really cool and it fits it's basically a scrapbook it is and, okay keep in mind that this is supposed to be before Sinnoh became a thing, this isn't. This is old school. Old school before the old school was an old school. Old right. School, new school. So, if this is the region's first 
Pokedex that you're trying to complete. Which, bear in mind, just by the way they made this, honestly, it leads to a lot of questions of like what the rest of the world is like at this it, point. It does because of something they introduced. <laughs> and oh, <no. laughs> we might as well talk about it. Stantler has an evolution. Oh, my God. Don't get okay. What okay. is it called again? Weird deer. Weird deer. A basically Santa looking type deer Pokemon. Honestly, I think it looks more it, like it, weird it, ear. It, yeah, <laughs> but it's it's like a reindeer with a beard. It, it's Santa deer. Yeah, it's Santa deer. But the point of it is, is that Stantler is a Johto Pokemon. Yes, and what what's this region's name again? Uh, Hisui. Isui? Isui, Isui, yeah. Isui, yeah. In the Isui region, that Stantler evolve because they've adapted basically to this terrain. So that would imply that they've been there quite a while. But did they migrate to Johto and lose the ability to evolve? Honestly, I would assume it would probably be the other way around. Or... <sighs> okay. You see, I get what you're saying, but if you're going to retcon an evolution into a game thousands of years before the main games take place... Now, to, to be fair, just to pretext this, apparently a lot of people were saying that this retcons the original, like many of the original games. I don't... But here's the thing, is... I don't... I get it. At the same time, I disagree. Mm -hmm. Because... If this is a, another ex regional variant exclusive uh -huh. to the... Um, the region that we're in, whose name I keep forgetting, and it's on top of my tongue. Isui. Isui region, thank you, Tetsu. You're welcome. If it's a regional variant to the Isui region, mm -hmm. just like the Alolan variants, just like the Galar variants, it would make sense in a way, but I don't think Stantler was available in Diamond and Pearl, was it? Not that I know of. So... Not unless you got it through the... Uh, so, in a, in a way, that that way I don't see... I, I get what people are saying, it retcons the earlier games, but in a way, if Stantler wasn't available... And who knows? It could be that Stantler originated in the Asui region. Okay, I see where you're going with that one, but I do have... Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to get a bit scientific here. Oh, Lord. Yes, unfortunately, I do apologize. <laughs> uh, okay. How so, much time do we have left on this broadcast? You're the one who said to keep going until we were done. <laughs> right. We still have to do SummerSlam projections. Oh, dear. Anyway, <laughs> to try to speed this along, the way evolution works, at least from our real-world standards... Evolution is a mystery full of change that no one sees. Do you want this to drag on? I'm sorry. We got talking about SummerSlam and you said evolution. I got wrestling on the brain right now, okay? Yeah. Well, see I see line in the sand. You're not helping. <laughs> Time to find out who I am. Gosh dang it. Moving on. The way evolution works. If you, I'm going to bop you. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. I'm done. Gotcha, I mean, it's good because you're excited. But <laughs> just, to, just to try to get this moving, um, the way evolution works, it, and keep in mind I'm not a scientist, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but it is concept of adaptability, right? Well, in order for... It would it implies that Stantler was in the Hisui region far longer than... I mean, it, apparently in the time they are in now. When it came to the modern game, well, modern, uh, the original uh, Sinnoh games, Stantler's not a thing. Not unless you get it through, I'm assuming, what was the Poke Park at that time? It was like a multiplayer Pokemon thing that you could do, like in the very end of the game. Uh, I could be remembering wrong on that. But basically, this would imply that Stantler and by degree its evolution were, went extinct at some point um the reason is is because the i mean i suppose you could say it does work the other way around where oh, yeah! again you are not helping 
I would disagree with that. I would disagree with the fact that you said the Stantler line went extinct. Extinct in the Hisui region. In the Hisui region, or better known as the Sinnoh region. Mm-hmm. I would disagree because you can't, can you really say something went ex- extinct in one region if it migrated to another? I am saying I paraphrased. Right, I know you said you paraphrased, mm-hmm. but if Stantler originally, and we're just guessing at this point, yeah, because I mean, based on the evolution if St- my hypothesis is that the Stantler line originated in the Hisui region, I I see where you're coming from. The okay. To be fair, nobody has a real freaking idea of how the world is set up in Pokemon. It's never actually outright explained. No, because apparently the you know the Unova region is based on New York City, but you know it's just here and there. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean the only the only real places, and admittedly this is to my limited knowledge because I mean I don't remember crap, uh, is that Johto and Kanto are like right next to each other, and that's because about they're based it. off real real locations in Japan. Yeah, I mean, but that's basically the only real concrete evidence we do have of the Pokemon world, unless I, you want I, to Lola. I, I think. I remember, if I think right, I think Kanto and Johto we know for sure are together because gold and silver. Yeah. Because of gold and silver. I believe the same can be said for Hoenn and Sinnoh. I don't know. I've heard. I've heard, I've that, heard some... that Unova is the fur. Unova is the furthest away from all of them. Now that I have heard, yes. And then Alola is an island, a set of islands based off the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. And then. Kalos is where I don't know where. Don't even get us started on Colosseum. And then Galar is based off of Great Britain in the UK. Yeah. So, granted, this doesn't have this has nothing to do with possible placement in the Pokemon world. But then again, now if you want to say that whole the Stantler originated in the Usiri region, right? Well, that's what you're saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But then again, then you have to bring into the fact of other regional variants. Mm-hmm. Like your Sand Shrews and your Volpexes in Alola. Yeah. And your Coughings, and just like your Weezings, mm-hmm. and Meowths and everything. Because Meowth has two regional variants. Yeah. In Galar and Alola. Mm-hmm. Uh, one makes it look like a black cat or somewhat dark. Well, yeah, one's a black cat, which is a dark type, and the other is a steel. That looks like a... Hedgehog. But then again, he, but here's the thing: is the Alolan version of Meow still evolves into Persian? Technically, yeah. Technically, yes. But the Galar version evolves into a completely new Pokemon. The dang face. In, into Berserker. Yeah. Which is very useful against the Fairy type gym leader, and then it kind of loses its usefulness at that point. I, I in, actually in never. I never actually used it. I I, to... I did use the Alolan Meowth. The, the Alolan Persian is really good. Yeah, but what, as soon as it evolved and I saw that face, I'm like, <laughs> "Which one? You don't, which one? You don't like chubby Persian?" No, I don't like. That. I don't like that expression. <laughs> but if we go based off off a of regional variance, mm-hmm. which the evolved form of this Stantler, you can then classify that as a regional variant. Yes, because even the legendary birds had a regional variant. Mm-hmm. So. It, it's not. We can also say that. Which, to paraphrase, it's actually been spoken by the uh, official Pokemon uh, dudes that these guys aren't actually Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres. They're supposedly something different, even though they are called that, which doesn't make any sense. But hey, I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay, but if they're regional variants, right? So we can assume that either the Stantler line started in Usui, mm-hmm. or they migrated. Or there are two separate lines of Stantler. Yeah. There's the Johto variant, and then there's the Asui variant. Which is possible. Which is very possible, because we've seen it before. Even in the anime, we saw it. Mm-hmm. With the... With the uh, and we started... And it went back before they were even regional variants in games. Yeah. Uh, in the it, Orange Islands arc. Yeah. that That's something I never quite understood. They show, like, in the beginning of the Orange Islands, the very first episode after they crash land, heaven knows how, they survive. Yes. Butterfree. Butterfree, Vile Plume. Mm -hmm. They were obviously... Hell, there wasn't even an entire island in the Orange Island where they were all pink because of the fruit on the island. Technically, I don't think you could call that a regional variant. There was a crystal onyx. Now that I will agree with. 
I mean, if you can't, can you not call that a regional variant? I can. Granted, we never saw another Onyx, I don't think, in the thing that didn't belong to somebody. Uh, you know, you, well, true, but, you know, every time we ever saw Onyx, it was being used as a staircase on an underwater ship sinking down after they recalled every one of their Pokemon because they weighed too much. So they sent out the giant rock snake that outweighs them all. Amen. I mean, again, anime logic. Go, Onyx, make a staircase! <laughs> you know. So... The other regional variant that I thought was really cool, you didn't really care too much for, was Growlithe. It looked like a Drampa. It, it did. It did look like a Drampa, but I think it's adorable looking. It's fluffy. It looks it's like Poofy. It's very right fluffy, and it does look like our dog Poofy up here. And yes, we are talking about you. but She's wagging her tail. You made an excellent point based on the description that it ha- the top of its head is a rock. Uh-huh. So you are under the assumption that it's fire. Hey, did you just fart? You're under the assumption that I'm trying to hold the show together. Sorry. That it's rock type, right? Yeah, I mean, but it doesn't look like it's anything other than. But would you go fire rock at that point, or would you think it's just pure rock? I don't think pure rock, simply because besides its head. There's no other justification for it unless it's a mixture between ground and rock. Right. Because okay, to, to be fair, we we have kind of like a limited moot, like a limited pool here when it comes to regional variants. You've got Sandshrew, who's a nice type, and Wolfex I, is a nice type. Uh, you also have Meowth, yeah, who's a dark, dark type, type Steel, Rattata. Coughing, which got a fairy typing, Rattata. You know. Well, not coughing, but wheezing. Wheezing got a fairy typing. I'm sorry. Wheezing. Anyway. I'm sure there were other... There were other... Was it just Meowth and Wheezing? Hmm? In the Galar region? Uh, with I feel regional like... Variant? Oh, no, there was Ponyta. Yeah. Ponyta had a regional variant. I love fairy type Pony. Fairy psychic type Rapidash is awesome. It, it was My Little Pony. With, co- with no. cotton. With cotton. You candy. said it wrong. It's My Little Ponyta. That, that, that doesn't change the It matter. changes it, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, cool. so I don't. we don't know if Growlithe is going to have, if Arcanine is going to have original variant because of this thing. Does it evolve into a <laughs> new Pokemon? Does it evolve into a new Pokemon? That is a good point. Because Meowth evolved into Berserker, so why wouldn't this evolve into a different version of Arcanine? I mean, I really hope not because Arcanine is still one of my favorite Pokemon. I mean, it was the first holographic I ever got. Uh, how I remember it, so I have no idea. But it was the very first holographic I ever got in a booster pack. Right. Uh, we did get another regional variant in Braviary. Yes. Which uh, is, I think is the biggest biggest offender of the... It, I, you know, defender. look, I was fine with the Articuno psychic typing right mm-hmm. I was fine with it this just looks stupid it literally it it doesn't even like with Articuno at least they changed the coloring and the sprite to make it look different than a Cantonian Articuno yeah especially it's tail like you, you it literally looks like a Unova version of Braviary but it has purple goggles on its head Yes. It's it, also a different coloration. It, it's a slightly different coloration. Well, you went from white and red to white and blackish. Slightly. I mean, it's nothing different about it other than the fact that it can use psych. And it looked like it used psycho cut in the first, in the trailer. Yep. And then uh, there was one more. Or psycho boost. Or I psycho mean. boost, yeah. There was one more. Uh, Basculin got an evolution. Yes. Uh. Gosh, dang. Basculin was in Sinnoh. Yes, it was. It, it originated, they, they mm-hmm. originated there, right? It's, so, it, th- it's evolution. It evolves from the spirits of dead Basculin. That it basically said, screw life, we're going to haunt you for the rest of yours. <laughs> and it never supposedly gets tired. Now, here, here, a lot of people are making the argument that it has little, basically retconned at this point. Because of this evolution of a Pokemon that existed 
exists in Sinnoh. Right. But the evolution does not. <coughs> Why is that? Um. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just like... How, how do you explain that? How, how do you explain that an evolution does not exist? Well, it's the same argument we can have about Stantler. Not really. Because, remember, Stantler did not exist in the Sinnoh games. Vesclin does. Right, but the thing is, you we made the argument earlier that we could say that there are two separate lines of Stantler, right? Mm -hmm. One that lives in the Hisiri region and one that lives in the Johto region. Yep. And the one in the Hisiri region went extinct. Is yeah. what we're basing this argument off of. Yeah. The same thing could be said about the Bast the Bastion Bastion. Basculin, thank you. Line. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything more about it. We don't know how it how it supposedly absorbs the souls of Basculin that have failed <laughs> swimming upstream. We don't know anything more about it other than the brief Pokedex description that we got in the trailer. I have a theory. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that a basket a basculin with puffy red hair walks into the other basculin and says, I want to speak to the manager. <laughs> All right, and with that, let's move on here. Uh, anything else interesting you want to add? The fact that you can be beaten up by Pokemon. Oh, there you go. The fact that your human character can get attacked. That is a very unique thing to add to a Pokemon game. Which is kind of surprising. I mean, okay, for anyone who's ever read a Pokedex entry for any of the regions, you will come across some pretty gnarly entries. Like Pokemon possessing people, Pokemon being born from... The, like a doll with a grudge what against was its it? child? It was one of the ones it was a recent one, wasn't it? That I can't remember the name of the Pokemon, but I, I have to look it up but it's basically, <laughs> the Pokedex entry was basically it lures children in uh, That kind of makes me think of a Kappa I don't know if it was a Kappa or if it was something else, but yeah, it's it's a weird element to to finally put in a Pokemon game after twenty five years. Yeah, it's a very weird thing that. Um, Sorry. Go you on. would you would think that uh, that would be in a previous game, but you know, if you were going to introduce this, like the Wild Area and Sword and Shield would have been the perfect place. Uh, I, I, with the rampaging fully evolved Pokemon in Sword and Shield the ones that you couldn't catch because you didn't have a certain gym badge the the reason the reason I disagree with this is because of the setting the area is literally called the wild area but the place that it is located is a very civilized place whereas the uh. Sui region is described as literal frontier. We were sitting in the truck on lunch today, and he had not seen the trailer yet. I had seen the trailer. And he said the first thing he said... He said the first thing he said. No, the first thing you said, thank you, was you love the line that Pokemon are terrifying creatures. Yes, because they are. Think about it. And... <laughs> That's, that that stuck with me through the rest of the day because he's not wrong. No, think about it. You have literal rats that can bite through steel. You have a gosh damn electric squirrel that can bake you alive with electrical current. You have giant dragon things that aren't actually dragons. I don't get why. That cause gigantic tsunamis and massive hurricanes on the sea and i'm talking about gyarados by the way or you know i really you're talking about gyarados i thought you were talking about that episode of the anime where tentacruel was like Gigantic. the size of godzilla what and, and you know <laughs> to this day there are certain things about the pokemon that episode that bother me 
And it just refreshed my memory when you brought that up. Well, how in the where the hell did that tentacle go? Well, yeah, where the hell did one? Where the hell did that tentacle go? But how the hell did Butterfree carry Bulbasaur? That is actually <laughs> a good question. It's just, it's just what I get. Pidgeotto carrying Squirtle, right? No, Pidgeotto didn't carry Squirtle. Uh-uh. Zubat carried Squirtle. <laughs> I never God. thought about that. Like, how did Zubat carry a Squirtle? It doesn't have, it doesn't have any claws. <laughs> Forget Butterfree. Butterfree at least has nubs for hands. <laughs> it actually has some kind of hand. How did Zubat carry a Squirtle in the battle? <laughs> like, uh, does he have like little feet? Like, like where's the Butterfree plus? I want it. There it is, right there. Like, I gotta figure this out real quick. Like, it has little nubs right here, uh-huh. and if it was flying like this. I don't understand how a Bulbasaur, like, I know this is a side up, but, and you can't see this, but, like, how? Well, to be fair, Bulbasaur does have that bulb that has, that comes at a peak. Right, I know it does, but, Zubat carrying Squirtle. Now that I won't disagree with. I don't really get that. I really, I don't, really do. I don't understand that, and that will always be a mystery to me, and I will put Butterfree up there for now. Hopefully I don't fall. Because <laughs> this one can't actually. Um, the other thing I want to talk about the crafting of Pokeballs. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of another thing. Um, okay, for anyone who has been with the Pokemon games, uh, Johto is where we're introduced to Apricorns. Apricorns are how ancient J- Jotonians or whatever you want to call them, Johto people. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the secret of the ancient Johto people. <laughs> they made Pokeballs through apricorns. Uh, through a very mysterious product, says it's not explained. You know, you just tried to describe what a, a really off-putting episode of Legends of the Hidden Temple would be. You're going to have to refresh my memory. You don't remember that game show with the talking stone and everything, and the kids would do all these sorts of competitions, and they would get it would be based off a certain like myth or legend. And then they would go with the golden monkey that was only three pieces and nobody could ever put it together. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Gosh damn it, I lost my fucking point again. You were talking about ancient Johto culture. Right. Uh, apricorns were how they made Pokeballs. It's not greatly explained how, because the way Pokeballs work is, gosh dang, confusing. That's right. All right. But how they make... Because at least the modern Pokeballs look like they're made of metal. Whereas... I'm so looking forward to... I want to hear your description of how Pokeballs work. Please tell me the technology behind Pokeballs, Tetsu. We'd be here for far longer. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Trying to move this along so we can actually get to SummerSlam. Uh, I'm pretty sure nobody at this point wants to hear my thoughts on SummerSlam. (laughs) I mean, I'm actually kind of curious. Right they want to hear more of my theories on why the Pokemon anime is the most misguided thing ever. Oh, uh, we'd be here all fucking day for that one. Pardon my, pardon my <laughs> Just mind. remember, rubber conducts electricity, so here's some rubber gloves. Oh, and, tie, and a clothesline to tie your yellow rat up as you drag it up a hill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or my favorite line from that first episode. It comes out into the open fields and sometimes fields to steal food from stupid travelers. Does that mean I'm stupid? Well, you just asked an electronic computer if you're stupid, Ash, so yes. Uh, We need to review the Pokemon, just like the first couple episodes of the Pokemon. (laughs) That's going to break my heart. Mm. Uh, I know. Anyway, um, moving along. So, yeah. Johto, basically Johto used Apricorn, make Pokeball. But how do they do it in the Kasumi region? This is kind of this is kind of the thing. And yes, I went on about this for like ever since they announced it when we saw that first trailer. When I saw that Pokeball, because it looks like it's made of wood. In, in the in the the thing is in the trailer, they were shown making heavy balls. Yeah, 
which you know, and the side part of it was it was apricorns, mm. and so obviously the apricorns are going to be in the game at some point, and we don't know what kind of pokeballs you can fashion if it's just going to be the original. Apricorn Pokeballs from the Johto region. In in the trailer, there was a blue Pokeball. I'm assuming that was either a quote unquote great ball or, or maybe it was a ball. lore ball. Yeah. yeah. What was it thrown at? Do you remember? Uh, I do not. Okay. Uh, basically, it looks. Oh, Gastrodon. Okay, That's so it could have been a lure bar. Lure ball. Lure ball. It's the ball for fish. Anyway, all right. Um, anything else you want to say about Pokemon Arceus? I mean, honestly, I'd uh, like to talk about going back to the Pokedex. Yeah. And, and okay, I'm going to try to be brief here. I do. God damn it. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me. Anyway, the uh, the Pokedex. I I really love the fact that it's just note cards. I right. really I really just love the fact that. That's what it is. Now, again, this does make a lot of confusing assumptions. Like, what the freak is going on in the rest of the world at this point? Which, if they do this right, Mm -hmm. they could be opening up a lot of stuff that they could work with in the future. New, like, old, old versions of the regions that we know in a way that builds more into the history of the world that we're aware of. Right, and I'm just going to go ahead and interrupt. I, I did look it up. Uh, the Growlithe is Fire Rock. Fire Rock. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. No. I, I made another good prediction. Uh, which? Huh. Which, I mean, yeah, it's cool. Um, it still looks like Grandpa Bell. I like the idea of base camps. I like the idea that it seems to be more mission-based. That that actually brings up another another issue, and we were actually talking about this on the way home. Okay, Pokemon has always been more or less linear in its storytelling. Even with the quote-unquote open-world feeling of Sword and Shield, right? it was still fairly linear in how it told its story. Right. Now, here, here's the thing. This right here is being described I mean, as a true open world. Right. You mean to tell me that a series about giving a 10-year-old a Pokemon in an electronic game and telling them to go off and beat a bunch of gym leaders and basically stop the mafia doesn't have a story. I'm not saying it doesn't. What I'm saying is because that I mean that was basically the story of Pokemon Red and Blue. <laughs> That's the Pokemon story of nearly everything up until the modern game. Shh. You forgot the legendary starting in Gen three. Right. Anyway, the well, an Emerald at least. The, but it does imply that. Not only are they trying to... It, it really does look like the poke. Usually the Pokedex is more of a side thing. Even though you start the journey usually under the assumption that you're making the Pokedex and filling it up. Right, it's always been... Gym leaders, Elite Four, Champion, Evil Team, yeah, and we're done. So, with the way that it's set up right now... Now, granted, we're we've still only got limited information... Basically, it looks like the point of the game is the Pokedex. But how, we, but we've never had a Pokemon game where it's solely been just the Pokedex. Just the Pokedex. How? What kind of story is being told at this point? Now, we did wind up discussing when, during the whole Giratina yeah. idea was that the big Pokemon because. I, I could be wrong about this, but in the trailer, yeah. it seemed like yeah, the Pokemon... Yeah, the Pokemon, the, the evolved form of like a Luxray and an Ursaring. They looked far bigger. And your idea is based off the Totem Pokemon in the Sun and Moon games. Kind of, yeah. Like, they're using that as a template here. And these Pokemon are big, they're angry, they obviously are powerful, and they're terrifying. <laughs> like, an Ursaring charging at you at full tilt, that would make me piss my pants. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a good theory, and like you said, we're operating right now on limited, yeah, well, very limited information, and I have a feeling that the game doesn't come out until January of next year, mm-hmm. so we'll get more information as it comes Hopefully. based off of what we have now. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. 
I really can't either. I'm I, I'm very excited. I, I I have not been. I mean, to think that we're not only are we getting the Diamond and Pearl remakes, mm-hmm. and then we are getting this brand new open world, quote unquote, quote unquote open world Pokemon adventure. Okay, the one thing I really just to, I guess is a form of conclusion here, which I've never been good at these, but I'm gonna. Right. Go on. So hopefully we can actually get to the wrestling bit. Um, because we got a bit to talk about when it comes to wrestling. Oh yeah. Okay. So just to you know, end this or you know, try to end it. Uh, I love history. I talk about it quite too much for people's liking. Anyway, um, the fact that we are getting a game based on the history of a region that we know well enough. But obviously, there's some new bits added to it that, mm-hmm. however you want to interpret it, that's up to you. I'm not. I'm not going to say if it retcons or not because ultimately, to me, it it it, it makes a lot of questions. I'm not going to give you. I'm just, just right. put, post a lot of questions, but it makes a it builds up more. It than, builds up more of the myth. The myth. In the, in, in the yeah. mythos and the le- the legends in the Sinnoh region more than they already are, and if we explore more, because you know we have these legends of the three mythical Pokemon of Ulixi, Axel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They're even not mentioned. mentioned. But then we have uh, Dialga and Palkia. How are they going to play a role, if any, in this game? Mecha battle. Gary, like we said, Garantina, uh, Arceus. What about stuff? Maybe we didn't even think about this, but what about Darkrai? I would Cresselia honestly, and Darkrai in some form or fashion. I would honestly be kind of surprised about Darkrai being in the game unless he was a, like a boss Pokemon. Like, maybe the leader of the galaxy? Yeah. Might but have the, the point we're trying to make here is is that they can go anywhere with this. They could. Because the mythos of the center region is already there. Mm-hmm. Now you can add to it. You now, can you can add to the to the myths, but you have in a way but try you, to be respectful. Try to be respectful. But you can add to it. You can. And you can make it better. And mm-hmm. you can make it more because it was what Pokemon fans want. We always want more. Yeah. We always want new new Pokemon new regions we still are all waiting for that day where we can get a game that has like five regions that we can go through in one game yeah which but, is probably never gonna happen not unless we get like a full MMO RPG esque and like we've got free like free fan games that do that but right. an official game with all that money and power behind it that would be so freaking amazing so um we're gonna wrap it up here with the Pokemon talk. Uh, yeah, Pokemon Arceus comes out in January, I believe January twenty eighth, Friday. Uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Let's get to the grappling portion. We'll get to the grappling portion in an hour and a half. Oh dear. Oh, and almost an hour and forty minutes into the show, uh, we are not sponsored by anybody, so we don't have to do any sponsors. Uh, we, I mean, we're a bit we're not, late. Yeah, for that. we're a bit late for that. Uh, if anybody does want to eventually sponsor us, that would be cool. Uh, not just saying. Uh, all right, so we're going to kick off this week. We've already had this is one of the biggest weeks in the history of wrestling. Uh, we've already had Raw on Monday night that absolutely was terrible. Uh, NXT last night was not a good show. There's a lot of stuff going on in NXT right now uh, that is very depressing if you're a fan of the NXT brand. Uh, the release wrestlers from last week the reports backstage going on right now that they want to turn NXT back into a developmental brand and they want to quote to stop and I say this is a quote stop hiring old midgets because Vince McMahon if you're not 6 foot 4 and 250 pounds you're a midget to him uh anyway uh, tonight we have AEW Dynamite that should be ending here in about four minutes. Uh, that has the fifth layer, uh, fifth labor of Jericho going on tonight, which is MJF versus Jericho, which any mention of Judas is banned in that match. 
So no getting to walk out to Judas, no Judas effect finish mm-hmm. finisher for Jericho. Uh, we're building slowly towards uh, All Out on September 5th from Chicago, Illinois. And then we have uh, Impact tomorrow. We have Impact's uh, pay-per-view type show on Friday. We have SmackDown on Friday. And then we have uh, AEW The First Dance, uh, uh, AEW Rampage The First Dance on mm-hmm. Friday night in Chicago from the United Center. Which everybody is pretty much expecting that is going to be the AEW debut of CM Punk. Hmm. Uh, CM Punk has not been in wrestling for the past seven years since he walked out of WWE at the night after the 2014 Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give my quick thoughts on this. I believe it's true that he signed a deal with AEW. I will not believe it till he walks out on television. I have, as a wrestling fan for over 20 years, I have been burned <laughs> multiple times. You will don't believe everything you read until, you until they walk out on stage. Anyway, I believe CM Punk has signed. I believe Daniel Bryan has, I'm sorry, Bryan Danielson has signed. And, if they show up, AEW is already been, AEW is already awesome as it is already, in my opinion. I know it's not for everybody. I know there are certain WWE fans out there that just prefer the WWE and don't like any other wrestling. That's fine. If you have fun watching WWE, that's great. For me, for years, it was WWE for me, and then I started watching New Japan stuff, and then I started watching Ring of Honor, and I started watching TNA slash Impact. And then I've been watching AEW since the debut, since the original Double or Nothing. The coffin crash. <laughs> so, then on Saturday night, we have SummerSlam from Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. SummerSlam! The biggest party of the summer. So, Tetsu does not watch wrestling. Nope. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give some predictions. Uh, Tetsu is going to give some predictions. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, this is going to be to determine the first ever Dos Dorques champion. And we'll figure out what to do with that from there. Uh, So, we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, Let's start with... The Raw Tag Team title match of AJ Styles and Omos coming in as the champions, defending against RK Bro, the team of Randy Orton and Riddle. Uh, AJ Styles and Omos beat the New Day at night one of uh, WrestleMania Mm -hmm. to become the Raw Tag Team champions. And Omos' debut match. Yeah. Uh, They've held those titles since WrestleMania. I think, in my opinion, it's time for a title change. And I'm going to go with RK Bro winning the the tag titles. Hmm. Honestly, out of those four names, Randy Orton is really the only name I recognize. (laughs) So I would have to go with him because, I mean, I I know nothing of the others. Right. Uh, Next up on the list, uh, we'll go with uh, Alexa Bliss versus Eva Marie. The first time you said that, I thought you said Evil Marie. No, Evil Marie. Uh, I was telling Tetsu, this has basically just been a... You've seen the stuff I've shown you of Alexa Bliss. The, basically, the female version of the Fiend character. Yeah. With the whole Alexis Playground and all that crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, this is basically being fought over a doll named yeah. Lily. Y- you explain that. And can, can we show, like... Uh, can we show footage of that? Would that be, like against product placement or whatever i don't know uh because you told me about the cgi and i actually looked it up i mean they're not i mean i know they're not So, yeah, you're going to see it on screen, but i basically just showed Tetsu the doll winking. Uh basically look Eva Marie, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to touch this. I don't want to do anything like this. 
I don't want anything to do with this whole Eva Marie Alexa Bliss crap. Uh, the Alexa Bliss for the win. I think the doll's going to be set on fire at some point. I think Lily is going to play into the finish of this match. I'm just going to say Alexa Bliss. Uh, let's move on. Sheamus versus Damian Priest for the United States Championship. Uh, Sheamus won the U.S. title by beating Riddle at WrestleMania. Damian Priest is challenging here. Uh, Sheamus hasn't really done much with the United States title since WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. So, I once again, I'm going to go for another title change here. I'm going to go with Damian Priest. I have to go with Sheamus because the name Sheamus. <laughs> that, that's literally it. I like the name. All right. Uh, let's go for the Raw Women's Championship match. Uh, triple Threat. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair challenging Nikki Ash. Nikki almost a superhero for the Raw Women's Championship. And she can't fly. Look, the way that the, they have treated Nikki since she won the Raw Women's title the night after Money in the Bank. It's not the night. It, it's not been the way you normally would treat a champion. It reminds me a lot, I told you in the car, about the uh, Rey Mysterio World title reign in 2006. Yeah. Where they would constantly, um, constantly uh, have him lose to bigger opponents and then win on the pay-per-views. So, based on WWE's booking logic of champion lose, champion lose, champion lose, champion lose, champion lose, the story would dictate that Nikki would get the win here. I'm going to say she get, I'm going to go with Nikki. Nikki, Nikki, you're so fine, you're so fine. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm going with Nikki to retain. Uh, it, honestly, just in this case, I'll just pick the opposite. Because I mean, so I mean, you, who are you going with? There's two competitors. You going with Charlotte Flair or Rhea Ripley? Uh, Rhea Ripley sounds more villainy, and because she's almost a superhero, I guess she has to have a almost a super villainous. I guess. So you're going with Rhea? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> All right. Then let's go with the other uh, women's championship match. Let's go with Bianca Belair defending the SmackDown women's title against Sasha Banks. Again, a rematch from night one, the main event of WrestleMania night one, where uh, Bianca Belair beat Sasha Banks for the SmackDown women's title. And no, uh, it's not Prince. At this one, I would say that I would go with Sasha based on the fact that Bianca won at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to continue this feud with Bianca and Sasha, that I would say Sasha picks up the win here. I can agree with that. Though, considering WWE's track record as of late. Um... <laughs> yeah, so you, we're both going with Sasha on this one. Uh... Let's talk about uh, the Usos defending the SmackDown Tag Team titles against Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. Uh, the Mysterios lost the SmackDown Tag Team titles last month at Money in the Bank to the Usos on the pre-show. So, would you would you do another title change here? Uh, it depends. In my opinion, it depends what you do in the main event with Roman and Cena. But... I would say that Usos would retain here. Honestly, I gotta go with Mysterio. He's probably the only character that I know probably more about than, say, Big Show. Yeah. And you know that Dominic is his son, right? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Alright, uh, so you go so I'm going with the Us I'm going with the Usos, you're going with the Mysterios. Yep. Uh Edge and Seth Rollins. This one. Ed, basically, Seth Rollins has cost Edge the Universal Championship at Money in the Bank before seeing a return, so I'm going to go ahead and take Edge in this match. I guess I'll go the opposite. I don't know much about either of them. I know one's named Edge, and it makes me think that he's too much. You're not going to pick drinks. the rated R superstar in Edge. You're going to go with Seth Rollins. Might as well. Okay. Uh, WWE, well, well, hold on, we'll come back to that one. Uh, the one I told you about in the car on the way home, which is the worst stupid, stupid story build ever. Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal with Veer and Shanky banned from ringside, which is Mac uh, McIntyre, uh, um, Mahal's cronies. At this match story, 
could basically write itself. You it, have the it two. Could, you, you, you could. Have, you, have have w, you have WWE writer, writers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have two people that were fired from WWE after being part of a joke stable called 3MB. 3MB got over. Both were rehired by WWE. Both have won the WWE Championship. There is a perfectly good story you could tell of who is the better member of 3MB. That is not the story they're telling. The story they're telling is, oh, Jinder wanted to go on a motorcycle ride with Drew, and Drew took three days to get back to him and told him he was busy. So Mahal got mad and stole his sword. And then broke McIntyre's sword. But plot twist, that wasn't the real sword. Because Drew had the real sword. And then he started, and then he destroyed Jinder's motorcycle. And now he's trying to threaten Jinder and his cronies with a sword every week. There's a castration joke in here, but I'm just going to save it. I'm going to pick Drew McIntyre. Mainly because he's the baby face and it's SummerSlam. Yeah. All right, let's get into some main events now. Goldberg challenging Bobby Lashley, the almighty WWE champion Bobby Lashley for the WWE title. The Goldberg! So, Tetsu's pick is Goldberg. My pick is the almighty WWE champion Bobby Lashley. This should be a squash match. This match should go no longer than three minutes. And Bobby Lashley should destroy Goldberg. Now, as you pointed out, though, they're going to be going to Saudi Arabia. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. The rumored date for the next Sweet Saudi show in Saudi Arabia is October 21st. And the Crown Prince apparently loves Goldberg. Yeah, he loves himself some Goldberg. So if you were going to put the WWE Championship on on Goldberg at this point, this would be the time to do it. Granted, if they're going to do that, he needs to start going to However, the gym. Bobby Lashley needs to come into this match, destroy Goldberg. This match should last no longer than three or four minutes. Yeah. And then he should it should come in, spear, hurt lock, match. But that will remain to be seen. I would not be surprised if Vince puts the title on Goldberg. Yeah. And then what I'm going to go ahead and assume will be your main event. Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, defending the Universal Championship against the 16-time World Champion John Cena. Who you can't see, apparently. Look, I love the Tribal Chief character. I love the fact that he has been Universal Champion for almost a year, right? Mm Mm-hmm. If you were ever going to pull the trigger... Mm-hmm. And give John Cena the quote record breaking seventeenth world title. Which considering they let loose the other guy, I mean When they, they released Ric Flair, yeah who he's tied with with sixteen. I mean at that if, point it's if kind of a If you were gonna do it, mm-hmm. now would be the time because when could you do it ever again? Because you don't know how many how many more times Cena's gonna come back. Yeah, considering he's got his movie gig and all that. So, I love the Tribal Chief, but I'm going to go with John Cena. I got to go with the Tribal Chief. So, I'm going to pick Cena. And look, you could have Cena come win the title, break the record. He could drop it two weeks later on SmackDown. He could drop it at that Madison Square Garden show for SmackDown. That is your big main event for SmackDown on Fox. Mm-hmm. Right? There you go. He could drop it back to Roman then. Yeah. And then Roman can hold it till WrestleMania. All right, uh, that is the SummerSlam predictions of the show this week uh, <laughs> for this weekend. We got one more show I'm going to predict real quick. You can predict this if you want to or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to do some quick predictions for NXT Takeover: uh, Walter versus Elio Dragunov in a rematch for the NXT United Kingdom Championship, which was in the most the best one of the best WWE matches of the last year. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Walter's been NXT UK champion for over 700 days at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Ilya Dragunov wins the title here. If only to move Walter to the actual American NXT brand. Um, Raquel Gonzalez versus Dakota Kai for the NXT women's title. I'm going to go ahead and say Dakota Kai wins the NXT women's championship here. And Raquel Gonzalez goes off to the main roster. 
Uh, we're gonna go with uh, so then for L.A. Knight versus Cameron Grimes for the Million Dollar Championship. Uh, if Cameron Grimes loses, then Ted DiBiase must become L.A. Knight's butler. I will go ahead and also say Cameron Grimes probably picks up the win here too. Uh, I don't think this is gonna be the main event, but it should be Karrion Cross, the NXT Champion, defending against the returning Samoa Joe. Uh, Karrion Cross has been on Raw now for the past month, basically. I believe this is the last match he'll have with NXT. I believe he'll drop the NXT title here to Samoa Joe mm. and go be on Raw full time. And what I believe is going to be your main event, which is basically a three stages of hell match. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Fall 1 is a traditional wrestling match. Fall 2 will be a street fight. Fall three, if necessary, will be a steel cage match. I was actually thinking the labor of pregnancy, but sure. Um, so we're lo- we're looking at it like this. Um, basically, Adam Cole's contract is up after this match. Mm-hmm. I believe Adam Cole is going to end up in AEW because his girlfriend is the current women's champion, Britt Baker. Yeah. So, logic would dictate I would have Kyle O'Reilly win the first fall of this match, Adam Cole wins the street fight, and then Kyle O'Reilly wins the third fall in the steel cage to end the feud. So, I'm going with Kyle O'Reilly. That is the NXT 36 predictions. Any final thoughts on our first podcast? Uh... Yeah, that was a lot longer than I thought it was probably going to be. Well, the good the goal was I was going to try to keep it originally under an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, I failed on that, but I'm, if I hurry up and wrap up this part, I will keep it under two hours. Oh, dear. Um, Just imagine the next one. <laughs> right. So we're going to try to do these, what, bi-weekly? Maybe. It, yeah. And it's just going to be stuff that we want to talk about. Yes. Uh, anything that we find interesting, gaming wise, anime wise, we might end up having just an entire episode of us sitting here talking about the Pokemon anime. Yes, and what uh, what we feel our feelings on it. <laughs> and you have to realize we've watched almost every single episode of the Pokemon anime at some point or another. Um, uh, by, by certain parts, yeah. But uh, yeah, this was fun. It was. This was a lot of fun, and this was just a. Suggestion you made on the way home. Yeah, because I mean, I was excited. But, gosh dang it, yawning. Uh, I was just really excited when I saw uh, the brilliant diamond, shining pearl, and Arceus. I, I was incredibly excited. I wanted to talk about it. And I've always wanted, and I've, you know, I see other YouTubers on YouTube. They do uh, wrestling. YouTubers on YouTube, right? Yeah, <laughs> they do uh, wrestling predictions and live streams and all that other stuff. Look, I'm not live streaming my reactions to SummerSlam or NXT TakeOver because I want to watch the show, right? Well, and, that, and, and I don't think we have the setup for it. Well, that... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I honestly at this point would like nothing more than to be able to do that, and I'm pretty sure we could do it. Look, I'll review... I'll, re- I'll sit down and we'll do a review... Of SummerSlam and NXT Takeover, and it will not be two almost two hours long. It'll probably be more. No, it will not be that long, <laughs> unless like the unthinkable happens and it turns into something crazy. I have to talk about the All unthinkable right. Twilight Zone. I am almost out of uh, my voice is almost gone from doing this for two hours. And we got work tomorrow. And we've got work tomorrow, and you have to edit this. Yes. And put it on. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with that. I wish myself. So, I'm Champ. I'm Tetsu. Thank you for listening. And probably ignoring. And if this gets off the ground, we'll be doing this more. Uh, stay tuned to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Gaming. Yep. Uh, for more podcasts, we do have uh, Skyward Sword videos that are in process of editing right now. In the process. And once we have about four or five episodes of that series going up, we'll go ahead and launch that. Yes. So anyway, everybody, till next time, take care. Bye.